right. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Mindless War Podcast, The Road to 100. Um, so as far as the short film or short docuseries goes, uh, we are working on three and four right now. Um, one and two are officially done. Um, and we're working on three and four. Sammy's going to be working on three, and I'm working on four. I already got the things I'm going to talk about for four, so that's good. Now it's just a matter of getting everything written down and going and then going from there. So that's just kind of the update for the docuseries we have for you. Um, but as far as this episode goes, we have an amazing episode for you. Uh, we had um, Shane Hunt and Kurt Tuckfield, uh, the author and illustrator of um, Scary Stories A Tribute to Terror. Um, if you guys remember a couple weeks back, we had AJ on talk about the audiobook. So this week we uh, we had the author and the illustrator on to give their side and, and behind the scenes of what it was like, uh, of course, writing and illustrating the book. So that was fun. They were also the first author and illustrator to ever be on the podcast. So that's another milestone for the Mindless Horror Podcast. Um, another kind of uh, another interview we can add to our belt, man. Uh, yeah. Of people we've had on the show. From uh, scare actors to actors, directors, um, composers, um, author, illustrators, you know, you name it. We've had them on so far. So I, uh, I really like how this episode came out. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, Sammy, you got anything else to say? I just got to say one thing. Run that intro. Run that intro. Welcome to the Madhouse. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Um, of course, uh, I'm your host, Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. We are back with another fantastic episode. If you guys remember, about two weeks back, we had AJ on the podcast, and he talked about a little book um, that I hope a lot of people read when they were kids, but they did. Two amazing people did a tribute to this book to bring back our childhood fears once again, and that book was Scary Stories, A Tribute to Terror. Um, from what I've listened to so far, such a great book. It really has that nostalgia of the old books as well. Today on the podcast, we are fortunate enough to have the author and the illustrator of the book as well, um, Mr. Kurt Tuckfield and Mr. Shane Hunt. Hello. How are you guys doing today, man? How's, there, how's quarantine treating you guys? <laughs> it's pretty fun. good. Just, it's, uh, it's been an excuse to do things that you wouldn't normally do, like play a lot of chess, play a lot of drums. There you it was go. My aunt's, it was my aunt's birthday today, so we had this like parade that went by our house. That would have never happened that way without the... <laughs> The quarantine <laughs> thing, so it's oh, it's kind of interesting. Nice, nice, nice. I've Shane, what about you? Time, I've just been using my time to finish my basement, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> get ready, closer kid. and closer. <laughs> always, man. It's always it's good to get those projects out of the way now, especially now we have more time on our hands. Oh, and it's it's just uh, it's just rough. Like, man, if only we could have done it before the quarantine, so my yeah. kids had a little bit more space. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's all right. Definitely. So, gentlemen, you guys wrote a amazing tribute to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, a, a book series that I have read since I was a kid. When I was in elementary school, man, this book series was the book series to have, man. These yeah. were the books to read. For them being kids' books, they were pretty dark at that, and they made a whole documentary um, explaining that, of how these, how these st stories were actually pretty dark for kids. However, she did all the art for that documentary. Nice, awesome. I'm a yeah. huge fan of that documentary. And you remember the animation sequences? So that's that's yeah. where I kind of started. Yeah, that was a great documentary, man, and it really put a light on on what you know it did to uh, a generation of of kids as far as you know these stories and everything. I mean, I, I I remember them. I think what a lot of people remember them by is, of course, the illustrations. Is is yeah. those illustrations really brought those stories to life and. And you cannot forget those illustrations at all. And what you guys did with this book, um, I felt that. I felt that straight nostalgia of just reading and picking up a Scary Stories book. And the illustrations were there. And um, it's, it's just phenomenal to see what this book has, uh, you know, the, the time being from when you guys started till now. I mean, it's 
it's probably I hope it's going successfully for you guys. I mean, I I, I would I people need to read this if they haven't. So, uh, yeah, how's it been? With- that, there's people that want it. There's people that that are interested in it because I mean that's that's how we started it in the first place. Yeah. We wanted the fourth book because there wasn't a fourth book. There wasn't going to be a fourth book. And the yeah. only reason we started it is that we realized that kind of combining we could actually make it and it mm-hmm. it could have the same kind of art we, we we were we really wanted to you don't want to make a book like this if you can't uh emulate stephen gamble's art because mm-hmm. if you can't even if you have great stories it's not going to be the same yeah. so once we realized we could possibly do those do the writing and the art then we uh we're like we, we got to do it because there's there's you know, Alvin Schwartz died like 30 years ago and Stephen Gamble retired like from doing this kind of style 30 years ago. So there wasn't going to be another one. So we're just like, yeah. let's do it and bring it back for people. Definitely. So I have a question then. Um, so obviously, you know, th- that's been 30 years. So four years ago, what made you say, you know what, let's start it today? Well, I, for many years, I've had, uh, I had dreams about, I very like vivid dreams. Um, and I went into a library and I, I would go and I, there would be th- the three books and I would want to like check them out. And in one of the dreams, there was a fourth book and I actually picked it up and like looked at it and there was I- images in it that I'd never seen before. And when I woke up, I was like, before I woke up, I was like, I have to bring this out of the dream world into the real world. And when I came back, I was like, oh, that's not possible. <laughs> And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe it is possible to bring it out. I could just, I could remember what the stuff I saw. Shane's a great illustrator. Like, I can write. I can't draw, though. But with our combined effort and just, like, coming up with ideas, like, here's some stuff I saw. We, we, we were like, wait a minute, we could actually do this. And, like, so we started to get the ball rolling on that. And around the same time, Shane, that the, the documentary was starting to, they were, like, talking about making it. And Shane got involved with that. He did some art, and it was uh, kind of proto compared to what it is in the book. But it was like, oh, the the possibility of actually doing it is is there. Like, and we just kind of like looked at each other and was like, hey, let's just do it. We want, we wanted, we really just did it for ourselves. We wanted to make. We were literally going to make the book and print two copies, one for me, <laughs> Shane, and be done with. Yeah. It. And along the yeah. way, we're like, that's dumb. Let's make more. I'm no, so glad how, you did that. <laughs> yeah, that's how it started. And around the same time, Kurt had that like dream slash vision of of a fourth book. I mm-hmm. I got um, my first iPad Pro and um, started messing around with some of the the brushes and arts and settings on that Procreate app. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it. And I made this I, the movie It had just been announced. Oh, nice! And yeah. So I did this painting, and I did That's that cool. around that exact time, and that was kind of the first drawing that really convinced me that you know this might be something we could actually pull off to a, to a certain degree. The iPad was a huge, a huge part of it because Stephen Gamble would just make it with like charcoal or with like uh, graphite and ink, and he would just like make it, and it would be done. But I don't know if anyone, I don't know if anyone could pull that off again without. We had to like do it and be like no that's not right change it try another one move change this and the only way to do that was with starting with like the digital and where you can edit layers that the ipad yeah. was like huge part of definitely this. it's amazing what we can do with technology these days i swear man i mean you, you go from when this all you know stuff like this first started and it was all on a pencil and paper and then what technology does for us these days is just phenomenal man i mean to to, to get that kind of that replica of you know the similar art style of his it's 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 beautiful and i um that i think that's one thing i'm really excited for when actually going to get to read the book um because i have not gotten a physical copy but i've gotten the uh, digital cuz we were interviewing um aj about it and uh i can't read that's the one thing i'm looking forward to uh, uh you know reading those stories again and um looking at the art i mean I, I'm a huge fan of art as it is. I mean, I, I love comic books, and I think that's usually, I mean, a great story with a great artist. It always just it goes hand in hand, and it makes something that really comes alive when you read it. And uh, that's, I think, that's the, the most excited I, I am about reading this book is to read those stories again and look at the art. I mean, the art. I mean, it was a big thing in those books too. The art is 
is crucial. Uh, the yeah. stories in the original books are kind of aimed for kids. They have the some of the content is uh, maybe shouldn't be for kids, but the the uh, writing is definitely on an elementary school level. Yeah, it's very very simple, and yet and it kind of depicts something kind of normal. But right next to it is this art. It's like something out of a racer head. It's yeah. it's very it's very abstract, extremely complicated. It's it looks like it's li- drawn by a little kid, but at the same time drawn by like a master. It's a combination of it's so complicated. Well, yeah. it's like so hard to nail. Ask part Shane of the like, problem, well, part of the problem is that I mean, I've I've been a professional artist for a decade or more over a decade now and uh, all my art training is you know founded on realism and you know understanding the natural laws of physics and light and shadow and you know this kind of stuff and i understand you know contrast and of soft and hard and that kind of stuff but stephen gamel his approach almost ignores a lot of these basic laws of like physics and stuff that none of his stuff is lit in a way that uh, that i would normally light something it's just kind of randomly lit almost like one hand is in light and the other's in dark and there's no explanation for why um and so part of the reason it took so long is just because i had to reprogram my whole brain to try to do things in a completely opposite way to the way i'm I naturally and normally would do them. So definitely. It was a huge um, challenge. Speaking of those original books, man, I mean, they had some really great stories in them. I want to know, I mean, when writing this, what were some of your favorite uh, of those stories growing up uh, that really took some, maybe some inspiration on this project? My favorite stories are, are ones that are a little more uh, nightmarish or surreal and a little more Rod Serling esque. Um, I, I think my, I think the scariest one to me is the drum, which I think is in more. That's a creepy story. Um, yeah. I think that's a lot. I think some of those like the drum, uh, bed by the window. Um, some of those are, are, I think are creepier than the jump stories, like the big toe. I think they're just, I, I, but the drum is, I would say the scariest one for me. Definitely. I like that story a lot. It's creepy. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say in general, I feel like the Scary Stories 3 had the scariest content. Scary Stories 1, the first one was a little bit more tame, I felt. And then in, including the illustrations, I felt like the illustrations were a little bit more reined in. But in Scary Stories 3, you start seeing stuff like this kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, what the heck is going on there? Exactly. And I did one that's kind of similar to that in our book or just crazy stuff like this head this ghost like in a corner yeah wow that? And those are the thing those are really i mean i'll be honest i didn't i didn't really care too much about the actual st- stories as a kid i pretty much just read looked at the illustrations yeah, I wasn't. I was never really that interested in the in the stories themselves. I was. But I read it like every day. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at the art every day. I just did, like would just pour over it and think about it and try to figure yeah. out how he did it. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's. I think that's one thing about those things too. You just can't help but not look at the art. I mean, the art is just it's its own thing, and it really tells that story as to what's going on. Um, and I was excited when I found out that they were going to make this. And I want to get—I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Of course, writing essentially like a fourth book in a way. Um, I want to hear your thoughts. What did you guys think about the movie that came out? This is a question we've been asked a lot. Like, we really? get asked okay. this all the time. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess we're authorities on the subject. No. <laughs> <laughs> our answer, our answer is always that uh, it was a lot better than we thought it would be. Awesome. Like it was a. Uh, when I heard the idea that they were going to make it a movie, I was like, what are they, what is it going to be like? Because to, to like the art is such a big part of it. Yeah. And also the short, the, uh, the stories being very short and ending very quickly is also a part of it. You couldn't really do that in a movie unless it was like a anthology maybe. So I was like, ah, that seems like kind of a dumb idea and it's probably going to suck. But then I went to see it and I was like, actually that's pretty good. 
Yeah, yeah. definitely. It was a lot better well, than I thought it would be. I liked a lot I, of I like practical effects and it. it was pretty I had I had relatively high expectations actually just because I'm a huge fan of Guillermo del Toro and yeah. Andre Overdahl, the director actually I'm I loved Autopsy of Jane Doe and I, I thought Troll Hunter was one of the coolest movies. Actually, I, I was a huge fan of that movie. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's what really got me on board, too, was Gilmore Del Toro. I mean, I love anything he does, really. And I think they, yeah. just, they just announced that they're going to continue it. They're going to make another one, right? Yeah, yeah. that was going to be they the did. second question. What do you guys want to see for part two, man? I mean, what stories that were missed out in part one do you want to see in two? Man, I just want to see a lot more specific images from the books, if, if they can do that. I felt like they did pretty well with the recreation of, like, the the pale lady and the, the creepy faced woman from haunted the haunted house yeah um yeah but honestly i just want to see this ghost like just put that ghost <laughs> <Yes. in. laughs> definitely um yeah i don't know like it because you have to find the context of how do you put it into a, a like a, a larger story yeah and if i if i were to say like the drum or something i don't know how you would make that work so i'm not really sure like what you could put in I don't know how I would go about even writing a, a screenplay for a scary story movie. I'll like say if this. If someone asked me to do it, I might just be like, no, no thanks. Yeah, that's <laughs> a huge challenge. It's a like, huge yeah. challenge. One of my favorite stories um, was, of course, when uh, the, 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 the friend's going on the subway and the guy who's been shot, but you don't figure yeah, that out to the very yeah. end. Like, I would love to see an adaptation of that, or, like, the, even the... There was one where they, uh, the, the kids went to the graveyard and stood on the grave. Um, a very Another very scary one. Um, mm -hmm. I also like the one of the the, uh, the day of the wedding, of course, the bride. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the day of the wedding, the bride, they're, they're playing hide-and-seek. She goes and hides in the attic and then ends up, like, hitting her head and gets locked in the chest. That's one of my favorite stories. Yeah, yeah, and I would love to see something really like that come to life. You know, more. I'm thinking of more on the line of probably some. I mean, Gilmore Del Toro and and the the team over for the first one did an amazing job uh, bringing that to life. Yeah, there it is, um, the bride. I mean, so I mean, I'm looking at like more of a, a realistic type of how they could bring some more of those. I mean, because those are like a lot of realistic type of things. But I think what made the first one as well was, of course, the the creatures and and how they did it with practical effects. I mean. Of course, if you guys don't know, Guillermo del Toro is famous for practical effects with, of course, Hellboy. Um, what's his first movie? I forget. Um, uh, what is it? La Pan's Labyrinth, which is a great movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I just, I've just i loved Guillermo del Toro going forward, and I, I support anything he does. So, um, all right. Let's talk about length, man. I mean, how, how long did it take to uh, actually write and illustrate the entire thing when you guys were, like, finally done and... You guys finally knew, like, this is it. This is good. This is it's ready to go. It's like four and a half years. Ago. Four and a half years. Yeah, that that clown illustration I showed earlier. That I did I did that in December of two thousand fifteen. Okay. Yeah, we so. were we were like definitely um, wanting to make sure that we were completely satisfied with every part of this before we ever released it, because you we could there was stuff we could have released you know we could have it could have been earlier but it would it just wouldn't have it wouldn't have been on the level that it is right now like there was a, a lot of art that was just like great and and i was like no this it needs to be more like messed up like it has to be is it more texture like you got to go like even crazier like it was a lot of work especially towards yeah. the end where we were trying to just really dial it in it was pretty yeah. insane actually so do you mind taking this through those like four years of development? Like, did you guys were you guys writing and illustrating at the same time, or was it written and then illustrated? Um, at first it was um, I was like Shane, like draw this. Like I have like a, here's an image in my head, just like draw this, and then we'll put like a story to it. And then it was like then the story started coming. I probably came up with like I don't know fifteen of them in a day. Like I just like was I was working and I had a notepad and was like writing. But a lot of it was that we had to, we had to learn to understand the art. Was that was a big part of it? Because you you start looking closer and you're like, what are the rules to this? Like, oh, he's it's got a puzzle. This, it's like solving a puzzle. Yeah, he's got like this hand, or he's got like, like if you look at if you look at like the first page of or the first story and uh, like more, 
like this one here. You see that? Yeah. Like, uh, at the bottom, there by the phone, there are like some a couple of lines coming out of it. Yeah, yeah. Like one, two, three, four. There's I have no idea what those lines are. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So you look at that and you're like, well, what does this mean? Like, and that's part of the style is like it's very abstract. So that was a big part of it. Years of studying that and just slowly getting a, a sense of how to how to go about it and go about the writing. Trying to capture like the essence of it. I don't know. Had a lot. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> I would do like five or six illustrations and think I'd, I had them. And then a couple of months later, I'll, I'd, I'd like reach a new level and then I'd realize, oh, I have to go back and fix all those now. And so, <laughs> and that kept happening. So like every, every four or five, six months, I real, I'd realize, oh man, these are all not even close to the level they need to be. And I'd have to retroactively go back and fix them up and clean them up and do some, do new things to them to, to make them work better. Um, also just a lot of the, the time had to do with just the fact that I'm, you know, I work full time and I have a side business and I have young, four young kids and a yes. wife and, you know, family and a home and a mortgage. And it's just like trying to find time on top of all of that mm -hmm. to, do this enormous endeavor it's it's hugely and it's it's emotionally exhausting like definitely around around three and a half years in kurt was like dude why what's take what's going on why is this taking so long i had finally had to explain to him like i can sit down and just doodle and draw because my normal style is a lot more cartoony i can just sit down and draw like that easily and just whip out a sweet fun calvin and Hobbes style drawing in like an hour but trying to figure out how to do this kind of thing, it's it's, it's mentally taxing. Like it's Definitely. it's kind of exa mentally exhausting. So it's something I can't really build up the energy and, and motivation to do after you know eight hours of or nine ten hours of working and taking care of my kids and stuff like that. So it's just like it was a slog. But we all along the way we just knew it had to be done. It had to happen and. I knew it would. I just didn't know when it would happen. <laughs> it seemed Definitely. like it was. It seemed yeah. one if, several times. It felt like it was just was never going to happen, and then suddenly it was done. I'm holding it. Yeah, so to get is. to get a sense of like the 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 kind of like why it was taxing. Like to do a, an illustration. Like just when we started out, we we looked at pictures of dead bodies, like for like ten, like six hours, like straight. <laughs> Like from like mummified bodies from these crypts in in Palermo, Italy, just like yeah. staring at it, just like so horrifying. I'm like, get this, get this vibe <laughs> down. Here's another one. Here's another one. And he's just, it's just like, ah, oh, this is horrifying. Yeah, but that's where it's, it came from. So yeah, it was Definitely. it was mentally taxing for sure. This one so, right here. This probably took about like oh I don't know, 12, 14 hours, maybe more. Wow. Oh, that's really well yeah, detailed. Yeah. I like that. Through a couple of renditions. That's one of the more time-consuming ones. Yeah, especially because if you guys are trying to aim to get you know the same nostalgia and the same feel for the other ones, and and from what I'm seeing, you guys did, and and that's that's the, that's a, that must be that must be a huge accomplishment right there because you guys, like I said in the beginning, brought a lot of childhoods back to life again with these with this book. You know, it's like. You know, going when I first when I when I bought this, you know, the 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 digital, and I when I was listening to it, I was just I was excited. I was a little kid again. Like I I was just genuinely excited to like sit down, throw off the lights, and just hear these stories. Like it it, it was That's awesome. awesome. And and um, piggyback piggybacking off that a little bit. I mean, you guys got to work with our good friend AJ uh, for yeah. the. Um, for the audiobook, man, how was that, man? I mean, you, I know he said a little bit of on his side of how Amazing. things were, and and you, I remember you guys texted me on the uh, on the Instagram about you know how he was and everything. Uh, how how was working with AJ, man? It sound, I mean, he did a great job. He's a jerk. <laughs> I no, shan't AJ, forgive him. AJ is like so professional. Like I think when I was talking to you, I called him an anti flake. He's yeah, the opposite of a flake. He's like <laughs> super professional. AJ came out of nowhere and was like, it's like, oh, I want to be a part of this. And yeah. he, he actually, it was actually his idea, I believe, to make an audiobook. Because we weren't thinking, like, 
we weren't thinking about making an audio book because it's like, well, who are we going to get? a Like, why would we make an audio book? Yeah, yeah. Like, we weren't even thinking like that. He was like, oh, I want to do it. We're like, okay. And, you know, often when you start working with people you don't know, uh, you're often quite disappointed, honestly. Mm-hmm. And so we were like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, let's let's see how it goes. And then you start finding out more about him and realizing that, no, this guy's is, like, legit. Like, Oh, yeah. He, he's, like, very talented. And then we started working with him, like, to develop the tone of, you know, what it was going to be like. And I, you know, I recorded some voices, like, what about, like, this kind of idea? Take, start there and develop it. And he started sending me, he would send, he sent me all the raw tracks and I edited them all together Mm -hmm. because it just takes forever. But as they came in, I started putting them together. I was like, oh my God, like the stories I wrote wrote, and the characters I came up with are coming to life in my headphones, like. I've been a huge uh, fan of voice acting since I was a little kid. Like I, I'm obsessed with voice acting and suddenly I'm working with like a real voice actor for something that I wrote and it's coming to life like Definitely. all around me. And he, he just like nailed it. Uh, he did so many amazing voices. Like it, and not it, it only, was... not only did he bring it to life, but he added, he added like new dimensions to the characters and to the stories um you did i don't like there's one specific example i'll give then i don't want to give it away because it's kind of part of the reveal it's the fortune teller um at the very end his voice changes mm-hmm. and we didn't tell him to do that that wasn't our idea it was 100 percent his idea but when when you read that story and hear that and understand what he's trying to say and communicate by doing that it changes the whole paradigm and it's it lifts it up quite a bit and that was all him so it was really cool yeah, i was i was like i wish i would have thought of that <laughs> I would, I would, but you couldn't i don't know if you could have written that it would had to only be done as yeah. an audio book and he just exactly. like so yeah he was awesome like amazing guy like i still can't believe that that happened Definitely. If you ever want to see some good footage of him, he worked at a Halloween event last year in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. We got some videos of that. Um, he did a phenomenal job as his character Reggie. So definitely take a look at that if you guys get a chance. I mean, Where that's what we really turned that? us. That that's what really turned us on to who AJ is, and we brought him on for our character appreciation month we did last year, and we've been friends with the guy since. And uh, it's he does an amazing job. Uh, they really helped bring that story to life. And so when I found out he was attached to this project, which I had already kind of been following because through him he kind of was starting to promote it, and I said, oh man, I love these books, so of course I'm going to support this. Um, when I heard he was doing the audio book. I was like, oh, man, they chose someone great to do this. Like, I can't believe that this is happening, man. I love these books. AJ's a freaking a great person, and I, I just can't wait to see what this all comes to be. And I, I was super impressed with everything. Um, and, again, I can't wait to actually get the physical copy now and, and just reread the whole thing. I mean, because that's, that's what I'm looking forward to now. Is just, I'm, I might just bust uh, a Shane over there and just look at the illustrations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, one thing you get with the physical copy um, or with the digital PDF download is you get this whole notes section at the back, which we didn't do any of. We didn't do any of that for the audiobook. I just it would be kind of wouldn't really work. It's basically just Kurt giving kind of an autobiographical explanation of some of the stories and where they came from and how they came to be. And yeah. we've we've heard a lot of feedback saying that that's some of the pe- our readers' favorite part of all, or the whole book because it's peppered with like random illustrations that aren't tied to like a story directly they're just more kind of just things i just thought of um, just kind of have visions of in my mind but that whole note section is is pretty awesome i'm excited for you to see that definitely yeah in the end we were like we made too much art where are we gonna put it (laughs) (laughs) yep (laughs) have a like uh meet the author and illustrator right there man there you go I By like the way, it. sorry. What you mentioned uh, the haunted hayride with the AJ Dana as Reggie. Where do we go to actually see that? What do we, um, it's actually do we it'll be uh, there's there should be a lot of videos throughout YouTube, but there's there's actually a couple videos on my channel that I filmed because uh, we okay. had 
we had a whole interaction with them, the Knights of Horror. Um, we had a whole interaction with them because the, the whole purpose of the event was them to tell you this story of this like fictional town that's cursed uh, to relive Halloween over and over again. So at midnight, it just resets the day again. So their job as the actors was to really bring that story to life, which they did a phenomenal job doing. And Reggie, or, you know, AJ was the one that we talked to a lot just because <laughs> – he gave us some funny, funny uh, responses, and and just just to you know, add on to the story was just hilarious. So, yeah, that's definitely. He, I can't wait to see guy. where he goes. His career, it's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, so yeah he's crazy. he's only twenty one, man. So I mean, he's he's good. He's that, doing pretty good at a young one, age. That one shocked me when I found out because he was yeah. doing he was doing these voices that were so like low, mm -hmm. and he sounded like an old man, like a like with a. Sounded like Morgan Freeman or something. Yeah. His voices, and then I find yeah. out he's like he's just like a kid compared yeah, to us. No. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's insane, man. When he told me he was twenty one, I was like, dude, me and you are the same age. That's insane. <laughs> uh, no, so that, where do you guys draw inspiration for these stories? Um, for good question. The stories was it's a the biggest in, inspiration is my childhood. Honestly, it's all about nostalgia. Um, I start with there's like a place I want to I kind of want to go back to um, out of sentimentality, like a, a park we used to play at or something. And I just like I just start going back there and I'm there. And all of a sudden I just think of some kind of adventure that happens to be really scary. And it just kind of blossoms out of that. Uh, I, when there's a number of these stories that. Uh, were based on like actual dreams I had when I was uh, like a little kid. There's some things that actually happened. Like this, see this picture right there? That is that's my old, that's from my old house. That's the house I grew oh, up man. in. Oh man! Like I grew up in a house that was like we had to move out of it because it was basically too haunted. Like, it was wow. Is it a messed up place? Like, but I, but there's so many like amazing memories and so there's like this dichotomy of like happy nostalgia and like spooky scary stuff kind of creeping in i go back to like where the, all that happens and all these ideas start like blooming everywhere and by the way like he kurt when did you move out of that house uh 95 so kurt moved out of that house kurt and his family moved out of that house decades ago yeah and then out of the blue we find out that the the house is on on sale or for sale. And this is while we're working on the book. And I'm like, this would be a good opportunity for me to go to that house. Yeah. So we pretended to be looking for a house. Oh, we, nice. we called, we called the real estate agent and he, he like, we showed up and he welcomed us in and showed us around. Like we were, and we pretended like we were buying, I think we pretended that you had a, you and your girlfriend, Kurt, were look, considering buying it or something. <laughs> But yeah, that house that house is like the source of that, that house should be a museum. It's legendary. It's like the source yeah. of that house and the and the neighborhood around it is where most of this stuff takes place. Uh actually happened or was inspired by. It's just like a I don't know, there's there's a lot of stuff that was is a lot more um true than you might think when you read it. And that in uh, the back in the notes it, it goes into like describing every story of like where it came from. I also like a huge uh, fan of like Rod Serling and the Twilight yeah, yeah. Zone. I was, you know, I grew up on that and to try to like, I like writing in that kind of style where uh, anything can happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, like a vampire story or something. It's like something more metaphysical. That's why I like Definitely. some of the stories like the drum uh, where it's a little more abstract. I, I think the stories that I do are... A, you, generally a little more twilight zone-ish and abstract and uh dreamlike than a few of the more like jump stories or traditional stories in the original books although we have both but yeah I'm it's compelled. all from it's all from I'm, childhood and sentimentality i'm compelled to say david lynch also probably influenced a david lot of lynch. It. there's a lot i have a lot of influences but it's yeah, it's definitely. just like childhood man yeah i will say one story that really um it kind of uh, it, it gave me that like sense of, of being lonely and stuff was cotton candy, man. Cotton candy was an experience I had uh, when I was about five or six. I can't remember what I write down, but 
That's a all of the all of the the is. stories in the first chapter are exactly what I experienced in very vivid dreams when I was wow. like a toddler. And yeah. I've never really forgotten. But that's exactly what it, 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 it is. And there's there's actually a lot of like deeper like meaning to that story and some of those other ones. But I was that was the one we were worried about the most is like there's, there's I was people, worried about that one. <laughs> I don't think a lot of I don't think everyone's gonna get that story. I think some people are gonna find it really creepy and other people yeah, are yeah. gonna be like, What the hell was that? That doesn't make any sense. So, no, yeah, I, without giving away too much, I mean, it's just, it, it gave me that sense of just feeling alone and, and just, just being alone. Abandonment. You know? and it's like, you know, when, you know, it, when it's, when it comes down to that in real life, like, what are people's reactions to that? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's like, how do people deal with that differently, you know? So. Yeah, I think I if think, you under, understand loneliness and abandonment or like the yeah. fear of that, you're going to understand that story. But if not, you're not yep. so much. Yeah, definitely. Like to me, that to me, I think that's a scary theme. Like your parents leaving you when you're a kid; they're just abandoning you or, or something. I think that's a scary theme. Yeah, yeah. Um, another one of my favorites was uh, was it mannequin? Mannequin, yeah. <laughs> mannequin, just like midway as I was listening to it, I was like, I know what's gonna happen. And as it ended, I was like, this is wow. I love the way the direction this one took. I won't say what anything without spoiling it, but. It is such the direction it takes from start to finish. Yeah, at the end you're just kind of like, yeah, she kind of deserved it. Yeah, that's you know. <laughs> that's what that chapter's about. It's about karma. Yeah, and I I love I, I love the theming throughout the the book. So that was how the original ones were too. They 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 broke the chapters up into different themes mm -hmm. as far as what uh you know what they wanted to talk about and stuff. And you guys uh, executed that excellently with this book as well. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, we looked at it. We looked at the originals very closely to make sure that yeah. they they follow the exact same formula. Like yeah, everything, so, so. the fonts and everything, it just everything down to like yeah, the the size of the font and man, I started the I created the book. I formatted the book in in Design, and it it took like two years just to format the book right, just to get the right yeah, yeah. spacing and fonts and. And get all the chapter markers the right looking the exact right way and at the exact same level as the originals and that kind of thing. And then we, at the end we were like, we it had got to it. be perfect. We looked at it closer and we were like, no, we got to go even further. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many times have you guys read the books? Uh, way too many books. times. <laughs> Our own book. The, uh, the original, the original three. Oh, the originals. Uh, I've read, I've read it when I, all throughout elementary school. I was uh, kind of in trouble by the, the the librarian because I always had the books, and they're <laughs> like, "Hey, you can't you can't keep hogging these books. Like, you keep checking them out over and over again." There was a period of like months where I would I would be banned from having the books because I was just hogging them all the time. So I had I had these and Guinness Book of World Records, like old copies of that, like in my backpack all the time. It was just like uh, yes. and they were yeah. like, "You gotta you gotta you gotta share those books, man." <laughs> Never. So yeah, a lot. I read mine enough that I literally destroyed them. Oh wow! Like, I've I've ruined all three of my copies of those books, and they were we had to toss them because all the pages were falling out. So, but again, I think it was more just looking at the art than actually re reading the stories. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I have to ask this because I'm a huge fan, and I would love to see more. Are there plans to do a potential sequel to this one? Well, this book is actually as long as uh, two of the books. Yeah, it's it's you know it's like it's very long. The original books are like what, like a hundred and like a hundred, hundred and ten pages long. This one's like well, like three hundred pages long or something. Oh, wow, yeah. two hundred and uh, two hundred and thirty pages long. So yeah, it's twice as long. There you go. So. In a sense, like we already did that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> already have two, two and one, two for one. Yep. Make, uh, this, this is scary stories four. We're gonna make scary stories five. I'm like, no, that is scary stories four and five. There it's you that. go. If I yeah, if I... I have any more ideas, it'd be great to to do more. But it, it's also just like when you start a project like this, you're not thinking about, how, you're not aware of how much time and effort it's actually gonna take. So it's really yeah. fun. But if you were aware, you'd be like. 
no, I'm not doing that. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. so I don't know. It, it's very possible in the future we could, anything could happen. We could do Definitely. something. But at the moment, we're like just kind of letting just the success like, of this one come in. Man. To have yeah. this one yeah. done. Yeah. We're not even thinking about it. <laughs> um, one of the final questions I want to or I want to ask you guys is uh, for the audience out there: two words to describe your book. Mm. Well, it's two words to describe it. I would say it's surreal, surreal, uh, nostalgic, surreal and nostalgic. That's awesome. it. That's it. But you you got to have three because it's also really creepy. There we yeah. go. <laughs> oh, we'll do three. Because I like you guys so much, and you guys brought back my childhood. You guys get that third one right there. Well, we said we told each other very, right from the beginning. We told each other like every single story has to genuinely scare us. Yeah. And every single illustration I made had to scare me personally. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> until it scared me, and I genuinely started to feel like I was in danger in some way, I wouldn't it wouldn't go in the book. And that was the, that was the standard that I had to hit for every single illustration that I did. Yeah. I think, I think every, everything in this book is creepy. Like personally, I find it creepy and I'm pretty tough when it comes to like scary stuff. Like I, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's creepy. It gives me goosebumps. Just, I read some of these stories so many times cause you have to edit them and I wrote them, but even I'm just like, Whoa, that's creepy. Like, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, where can the listeners find the book at? Uh, scarystoriestribute.com. We, Definitely. Uh, we'll leave a link below so everybody can do that, Like much like how we did with AJ's podcast. We'll leave a link below. Um, yeah, we got the book guys... on sale. We got the audio book on sale. Uh, we're selling a bundle right now that's like really cheap where you can get the book, the digital, and the audio book for like 25 bucks, which is awesome. Really cheap. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, what about social media? Can anybody you guys find you guys on social media? Yeah, I'm on. I'm Shane Hunt Art. Okay. Um, we also have Scary Stories Tribute for our Definitely. book. That's all. That's all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, again, I want to thank you, and I've been saying it all podcast for for taking me back to that that scary place where I was as a child, and and giving me that nostalgia. Of, feeling like a kid again reading the, this book uh listening to it um and i can't wait to actually get the physical copy and and look at those illustrations and and really just mesmerize uh, a fourth and fifth like you said a fourth and fifth book in a way um i'm very excited to uh to actually to add that to the collection and uh it's gonna be I, i'm excited man i mean I, I can't wait to see what you guys do in the future as well um because you guys blew me away with this. So anything you guys do, Knights of Horror will support you 100%, man. That's, awesome. that's it for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely uh, go buy their book. Link's in the, uh, the description below. Um, uh, read it. Uh, listen to it. Um, you guys really need to take a look at this. This is something that's amazing. If you guys were fans of the original books, I guarantee you you'll be a fan of this one because they really knocked it out of the park with this. So uh, thank you to Kurt and to Shane for being on the podcast today. Uh, we we had a fun time talking behind the scenes of the book and and what it took to make this book uh, bring it to where it is today. And uh, we hope everyone out there goes and reads it and checks it out. Um, but until then, uh, if you can find us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror, of course, hit that subscribe button and bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video, whether it be a podcast, a original video, uh, whatever it may be, we lock down here at the Knights of Horror. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being on the show again, and uh, we will see you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.